Hey guys, it's Coach B. Wiley. Merry Christmas Eve. How are you doing today? If you're watching this, this is live on TikTok, but if you're seeing this on YouTube, happy Christmas Eve. Merry Christmas Eve. Hope you're having a good day. Wanted to come over here and answer a few questions. I got my handy dandy laptop in front of my bedazzled laptop in front of me and I am on Cura, Q-U-O-R-A and people go on there. That's one of the places you can go to ask me your dating and communicating questions literally for free. You have to, you don't even have to tell me who you are. Totally anonymous. Ask me a question. I'll answer it. All right. So the first question is, oh, and if you don't know who I am, I'm Coach B. Wiley, a certified professional dating and communicating coach. And I have been doing this professionally since 2020. However, I've been making videos and giving insight since January of 2014. And then in 2020, when COVID happened, I decided, all right, this is my jam. This is what I'm going to do for a living. So here we are. Let me know in the comments where you're from. And if you like this video, like the video. All right, the first question is, this really isn't about dating or communicating. It says, get into my... <laughs> get into my Christmas sweater, y'all. Get into it. All right. The first one says, I'm 21 years old and I have no friends. Is that okay? And then in parentheses, they put, but I feel lonely. For those of you who are 21, 31, 41, 51, and you have no friends. When I first moved to St. Louis, I moved here almost 12 years ago. It'll be 12 years ago next month. And I didn't, I didn't know anybody here. I didn't, I didn't have any friends here. And so if you're experiencing this, specifically in the holidays, it can get super lonely when you don't have any friends. I always tell people to go on the website meetups. Meetups is pretty much United. It's in every city and state in the United States. I don't know about overseas though, but if you're watching this in the U.S. and you're having issues with meeting new people, go on meetups. And on there, there are different kind of groups. You can start off by age. You can start off by race. You can just start off by, hey, I like to jog. I like to walk dogs. I like to rock climb. I like to go taste wine. Whatever you're into, you like to read books. It's literally a group for you on there. I have met people in different social social settings on meetups. So it's natural to feel lonely. Of course, if you don't have any friends, that's normal. However, you want to put yourself out there. And also, think about it. When you're going to the gym, that's another good place to meet people. Gym, church, meetups, and just anywhere where people will be. Go to all kind of festivals and just start small talk with people. And you can literally meet someone wherever you go. If you like to read books, go to the bookstore. And how you can start up a conversation there is just ask a person what they're reading. And then you can recommend a book you're reading. The next thing you know, you're talking. You can exchange numbers. Well, there it is. You got a new friend. So that was one that didn't really have anything to do with dating or communicating, but I guess communicating because that's how you get new friends, right? Who else out there has done their Christmas shopping? I mean, it's 535 here in St. Louis. So the stores, I'm guessing they close at six. I knew I wasn't going to any stores. I had to go to Target this morning because I have a particular candle, candles out of Target that I get. And they usually start selling them around September. And then they usually quit selling them by January. So I have to make sure I load up on this one particular candle. So I went in there this morning. I was in and out. So how are you guys going? How is your Christmas going so far? What are you looking forward to getting? Let me know in the comments. All right, we're going to move on to this next question. Is it bad to get over an ex very quickly? No, it's not bad to get over an ex quickly. It just means you over it. Like usually people, when they're dating someone... They're getting over them while they're with them. Usually dudes do that. Usually when you're dating a guy, he's the reason why it seems like he's moved on so quickly because he was getting over you as he was dating you. So is it a bad thing to get over someone quickly? Absolutely not. That means you've literally cut all your losses. There's nothing you can do about it. You let it go. You've given it to the universe and you're deciding to put one foot in front of the other and move forward. All right, let's go on to the next question. I'm running through these questions pretty quick. These are pretty quick, quick cut and dry answers. All right, listen to this one. I just cut all communication with my ex about two months after the initial breakup. Is it too late for 30 days? No contact rule. I don't really understand this question. I just cut all communication with my ex about two months ago after the initial breakup. It is too late for 30 days, no contact rule. If you cut all communication with your ex two months ago, is it too late for 30 days, no contact rule? Y'all hear that? Somebody car alarm going off during my video. Thank you. If you cut all communication off, all right, let me just try to make this make sense. 
if you are going through a breakup or have had a breakup and you've gone no contact, keep it no contact. Because if you went no contact, you're doing it for a reason. Unless you're trying to go no contact to give this person a silent treatment when you know that maybe you done something that was inappropriate to cause a breakup and you're trying to dip and dodge or maybe they did something and they're trying to apologize and you're purposely going no contact. That's the only reason I would think to go literally no contact. However, when you break up, it's done. You're broken. Keep it moving. All right. Does long distance relationships in college really work? Let me tell y'all something. When y'all in college, don't be doing this long distance thing. When you're in college, it's already enough with the load that you have to carry as a college student. I know when I was a college student, I tried that long distance thing my first year. It did not work at all. He was in Texas. I was in Arkansas. It did not work whatsoever. I wouldn't tell anybody. I wouldn't advise anyone to be in a long distance relationship when you're in college because you're in a young adult, literally coming out of the nest, trying to figure yourself out, trying to figure out what you want to possibly do with your life, trying to juggle being on your own, your own independence, making new friends, keeping your old friends, keeping in touch, keeping up with your studies, working if that's what you want to do, trying to keep money in your pocket. It's a lot. And then you add on a long distance lover on that. It's too much. So if you're going to date, make it local so you can be there getting to know each other versus stressing yourself out about why he hasn't texted, why he hasn't called, what he's doing. And the next thing you know, you're skipping class. You're going out of your way to go out of town to pop up on him. And it's just a mess. And you don't want to start no mess like that. Just if you were high school sweethearts, let's say you were together through high school, your high school sweethearts have a real conversation and just let them know, hey, we're going to go our separate ways to school and then we'll see what happens. Don't go into long distance relationships. I just don't think it's a good idea and because they're asking me. They want to know what I think. I don't think it's a good idea to be dating someone in college and it just puts such a heavy weight on you and it's just unnecessary. Now, long distance relationships, we're talking long distance relationships right now. If you just join me, someone asked, should they be in a long distance relationship when they're in college? Now, when you're an adult, a long distance relationship is different. People are doing it every day, all day. So if you're watching this and you're in a long distance relationship, I'm going to tell y'all the glue that's going to keep this thing, this boat afloat in your long distance relationship is going to be communication and you must over communicate. And I mean, you must communicate in the morning, evening, noon, night, dinner time, lunch time, brunch time. And I mean that because you want to keep that constant communication going open and flowing so nobody will be wondering or their wheels won't stop turning. That doesn't mean that the person is insecure. That doesn't mean that you're wanting to know what they're doing 24 hours a day. It just means when you're in long distance, that's distance. You can't just reach out and touch this person. You just can't show up to their job for lunch. You literally have to keep that line of open communication. And the more you communicate, the more things will flow when you're in a long distance relationship as an adult outside of college. Now, if you're in college and considering a long distance relationship, I would not advise you to do that. I will say, hey, find someone local at your school or at the neighboring school or someone maybe he ain't even in school and date that dude. All right. <laughs> and look at the follow up question. What is your personal experience? In a long distance relationship. Oh my gosh. I had two. I had one in 2013. Oh, so long ago. I had one in 2013. He lived six hours away from me and he was such a nervous wreck. Like it was cool at first. Like I, I'm, now I'm going to tell you a little side note about me being in a long distance relationship in 2013. Like we met online and then we met in person and then I would, I would go visit. I think I visited like twice during the relationship and it for me i was good but for him if he heard any dudes in the background just me living my best life if he heard dudes in the background he would like freak out and like throw tantrums and I'm like dude this is just a dude at my job like he even got mad because i worked in a i worked at this place called american water it's in illinois and it's customer service it was a temp job and i would speak if there's people around my nails are a mess i would speak to people around that's just what you do when you have a co-worker or you see somebody you speak and he once told me that I was too bubbly and I was just like what in the world so outside of that my experience in 2013 that relationship hit a wall it hit a wall for many reasons it just wasn't a good fit he didn't he just wasn't who he said he was and it just slowly started to come out that's why when dudes be showing up and portraying one thing who they really are is going to come out literally it's going to come out 
regardless how much you try to hide who you really are it will somehow seep out and who he was i did not like so i got out of there and i ended that and then in 2016 i did it again this dude lived six hours away he would always travel here to st louis multiple times he'd pop up all that and i thought it was cool but it just he was like a. have y'all ever talked to a guy who is just so it's like a, a piece of chicken a piece of chicken fresh out the pack and then you throw it on a skillet and then you cook it both sides what you think that chicken gonna taste like <laughs> it's gonna taste a mess bland af he had one of the most blandest personalities i've ever encountered and i was trying to like i was so desperate i was so desperate i was so desperate at the time and thirsty for a dude that I just made the relationship something that it just wasn't. And at the end of the day, at the end of the day, I'm looking back on it because I would have never dated this dude. It just didn't make any sense. But because I was so desperate, when you're desperate, desperate times comes for death. How does it go? Desperate times calls for desperate measures, something like that. And I dated this dude and and long story short, he ended up ghosting the F out of me. <laughs> After we got together, he ended up ghosting me and it was just, it ended up real bad. And I was just so obsessed with talking to him because he cut off all communication. And I can laugh at it now, guys, because who I was in 2016 is not who you're seeing today. Thank God I had that experience with both those guys. The first guy in 2013, he just was a liar about who he was. And other than that, he wasn't just a bad dude, but he just embellished. And then the other dude, he just was weird, odd. He was just, you couldn't really have a good conversation. You see, I'm talking to you. I'm literally holding a conversation with you and you're not even in the room. He would be in the room, but he would just, there's nothing going on upstairs. He's so checked out. There's nothing to talk about. He's like a bland piece of chicken. I'm like throwing noodles on the wall to see what sticks and because I was so desperate, I stuck it out. And then he ended up kicking my butt to the curb. And then after I kept trying to get back with him and he kept ignoring me or using me for whatever he wanted. After I woke up and just was like, this ain't it. You deserve better. I literally woke up. after. It took a while. But once I woke up, it's like once my switch was flipped, I then saw him for who he was. And I realized who I was. And I was just like, girl, what are you thinking? And guess what? He tried to come back around and get back with me. And to this day, I'm not kidding y'all, that was 2016. He is still re-friending me, trying to friend me on Facebook. Every time I delete it, and guess what? That little head pop up like a bobblehead. And he's trying to friend me on Facebook because he's trying to get in my life. And he will be denied every time. Because you should have got me when I was desperate. Now I ain't desperate. And now here you come with your big head. I don't think so. So those are my two. That was short my shortened long distance experiences and after those experiences i don't believe in long distance if i can't reach out and touch you like this if i can't literally touch you like i'm touching this right here then i don't want to have nothing to do with you ain't nobody about to fly across town ain't nobody about to be doing no every other weekends no sir i need to be hands-on and i need to have easy access to you and you to me so i'm not doing no long distance what do you guys in the comments think about long distance relationships have y'all ever been in long distance relationships i'm what i'm doing this on tiktok so if you're watching this you're either watching it live or you're watching it on my youtube if you're just tuning in i'm just answering questions i'm coach b wiley dating and communicating certified life coach speaking of that Side note, I was on Instagram on a random post and they were talking about everybody want to be a dating coach on TikTok. And it made me laugh because I'm like, who are there like fake dating coaches and relationship coaches? Like, what is this? Like, I don't know what's going on because when I come on TikTok, if I'm not doing a video, I'm literally looking at cat videos. That's literally what comes up for my for you. As you can see, we're on theme. And so I'm like, who are you being fake? And me personally, like to be just a little insight, to be a coach, a, a life coach or a relationship coach, you don't have to get certified. You can literally get on here and charge $300 an hour and decide that that's what you are and people can pay you and, 
and you don't need no no kind of certification. It is nowhere written that you have to be certified to do this. However, me, I wanted to be certified because I, I literally went to a school. I went to the Tony Gaskins Academy. So I don't know if you guys ever heard of him, but Tony Gaskins Academy, I went to his academy and there's a course, there's a literal course with tests. And I went through that and I learned because I wanted to educate myself on not only do I have a degree, I have a degree from a school of mass communication. I, special I specialize in communication. So I have a degree over in that school and I'm a life coach now. So I wanted to know about life coaching and how that business is ran. So I got certified. Could I have gone on YouTube? Sure. And learned some things. However, it's just a way about doing things. I have my certificate and everything. So I'm certified. I'm not just showing up on your screen talking about, Hey, I'm doing this and really I don't have no experience. So I have educated myself. I have gone to seminars. I've paid money to be to learn i've read books i've learned from my own experiences i've learned from the experiences of others and before i even started charging to be a life coach before 2020 because i didn't start charging until 2020 so from 14 to half through 20 i wasn't charging anybody and i was just giving out this knowledge so now that i'm certified of course i charge and if you want to book me the link is in my bio my mentor.life coach b wiley but that was just a little side note on coaching because some people will just show up and say they're a coach and they don't have no credentials no experience no nothing they just get on get on here and trying to take folks money so i guess that's a thing but it's not my thing all right look it's a long distance thing here i don't want to read that one because it's it's talking about x we don't want to talk about that on here all right. Okay. Do some people just never get over their ex? Uh-huh. <laughs> I literally know someone and they'll never see this video, but I literally know someone right now that it has been so long guys and they have not getting up, gotten over their ex and they're so triggered. You will know that you're over your ex when their name comes up, when something reminds you of them, when there's an old movie, there's maybe a floral arrangement that you know they used to buy for you when there's literally anything that could remind you of them and there's nothing you're like that emoji with that straight line for a lip it's just like mm, man you're not happy you're not sad you're not mad you're not depressed you're not you literally nothing you don't have any kind of emotional tie to that person number one that's how you'll know when you're over someone now when you're not over someone you trigger by everything you mad as hell you can't let it go you vent your head about the spinoff and it's just like you are bothered. And if you say you unbothered, anybody who says they're unbothered by their ex is the main one that's bothered. Anybody that has to go out of their way to preach about how happy they are, they are not happy. So if you're watching this and you think that you're over your ex, but every time you hear their name or if you have to keep bringing them up because something reminded you of them, you have to have a talk with yourself and say, self, we're not over this person. And what do we need to do? You need to do what B. Wiley advises. And I made videos on what I'm about to tell you. It's called deal, here, deal, heal, surrender. Those are the three steps that you need to take when it comes to a breakup. When you're dealing with it, you're dealing with that relationship, all the hurts, all the pains, all the trauma. There was trauma there. And then when you're healing from it, that's when you take accountability. Like, what did I do in this relationship how did i cause us to break up and i'm not saying you're the reason why you broke up let's just say he was cheating like old dirty dog well if he was cheating there were some red flags then you ignore the red flags so you want to definitely do a self-assessment take accountability and that's healing and then deal. so it's deal heal surrender now when we surrender and i learned this surrender thing from oprah i was listening to something random like motivational on youtube and oprah was like you have to surrender that thing to the universe the universe is god god is the universe so whatever it is after you've dealt with it after you've healed you're working on your healing and then the last step is surrendering you got to literally take it Whatever that thing was, that relationship, good, not so good or indifferent, you got to literally, it's off your back, it's out of your hands, it's above you now, it's not in your tax bracket, it's not in your pay grade, it's gone, you're, you're giving it away. It's the gift to the universe, you're giving it away because you've taken the necessary, the necessary steps to get through it, move through it, appreciate the lessons that were in it, reassess yourself with the mistakes that you made so that you can do better. And keep it moving that's how you do that so remember that and I have videos on here as well as on YouTube where I talk about the breakup process and I have a breakup book coming out next year I've been working on it 
it may just be called the breakup book I don't even know but I'm literally writing down the different categories of breakups and how you can handle it and what you need to do and the tools that you will need so that is coming out in 24 so be on the look for that and I don't want anybody to be hung up on no dude let me take a swig I don't want anybody to be hung up on no dude that don't want them just because he don't want you don't mean you less than so you sometimes you got to be like all right he don't want me got it and you have to say it out loud he literally doesn't want me so what do we do with that we keep it moving we block him out and we just go on about our day because that's the only thing you can do you shouldn't be trying to force somebody that don't want you and you don't want to be triggered by a dude that you're no longer dating all right this there's a thing going on here and i'm just literally going down let me see if i can show y'all what i'm looking at if it'll show up because it's so white no nope. well anyway there's words here and there's literally questions y'all can't see it it's there you go see those questions i'm just going down the list and it's a theme here so the next one is how do i move on from a relationship how you move on from a relationship and i'll say this is the number one thing you must do immediately like it's all said and done you've cut ties you got to cut his name out of your vocabulary don't even bring his name up anymore tell your friends don't bring john up anymore your family don't bring john up anymore it's broke up it's done i'm moving forward i'm actively praying my way through this process and i'm going to keep it moving John isn't a bad person. John is just not the right person. So that's the first thing that you must do. Then you must get rid of any and everything that will trigger you, aka remind you of John. John is gone. He's not here anymore. Then you must unsubscribe, unlike, unfriend, unfollow, everything on social media. John has got to go. John isn't here anymore. So that's how you move on. Those are the first few steps of moving on. And these things, I forgot one thing, the biggest thing that you ladies seem to have an issue with. You can't seem to really do this thing that I'm about to say. Get on your handy dandy cell phone, delete the text thread. I need for you to delete the text thread along with the pictures. That's what I need for you to do. If you cannot do that, then you're just not ready. You're not ready to move on because you're stuck. Delete that text thread and actively move along that's what you do all right moving on if the love oh if the love of your life passed would you ever move on you know what i am actually coaching i say that lightly he's not paying me but he does come to me for insight i am actually coaching a co-worker i used to work at this company years ago they eliminated my position right before covid in 2020 i had worked there for almost six years Thank God for that job, because had it not been for that job, I would not be able to teach people how to communicate as best as I do. Sure, I have a college degree, but going through that job and with the people on that job, because in my position, I had to talk to up to 50 people and I had to learn their personalities and I had to adjust and I had to learn how they like to communicate and what ways were beneficial for me to communicate with them. It was a job. And so thank God for that. And so I work with this particular guy. He's so cool. I love him. And we were always cool on the job. We're the same age. And his wife passed away. And we'll just say she chose to pass. She chose to pass. And it's unfortunate. They have a child. And it was recent. And I knew her. And it was just a shocker. It's it was totally left field. And so anyway, and these are these we were, we're young people. We're in our early 40s. And when she was in her late 30s. But anyway, all you can do is, I've never been in that situation. I pray to God that I never will. So what you can do is, is you can literally appreciate who they were in your life. Appreciate those memories. Celebrate those memories. Of course, there's going to be moments of sadness. Will you ever get over it? I have no idea. I have never been in that situation. However, I do know from my friend that I'm referring to, my old coworker, he is choosing to put one foot in front of the other and to go on with his life. He has told me, of course, he has moments of sadness. However, he is choosing to move forward because she made a decision. So he must now make a decision specifically for his daughter and he must move on. That's all you can do. So whether that person chose to leave here 
or did not because it's all going to happen to us regardless if we choose it or not. Hopefully you don't choose to do that. So once we grow old and then we're married or not and your partner passes away, you have to choose. Are you going to die with them or are you going to move along and celebrate those great memories? And when you have a moment, you take your moment and then you move through that. However, you want to focus on the positive aspects of that person. And I think that will help you through that process, not necessarily get over them, but it will help you through that process. If you're just joining me, I'm Coach B. Wiley. I keep saying that. It's like a broken record if you're still in here. I see some people in here. Let me know in the comments, where are y'all watching me from? And if you like this video, please like the video. Where are you where are you watching me from? I'm in Missouri. And how did I come up on your page? I see some of y'all in here. So if I see you, I know you see me. So put it in the comments. Where are you guys watching me from? And how did you find me? All right, we're going to move on to the to another question. And y'all ain't saying nothing. So y'all just going to look at me and not say nothing. That's what y'all going to do. Okay, okay, I got y'all. It's Christmas Eve. Maybe y'all cooking. So that's y'all excuse y'all in the kitchen cooking. Because I'm about to start calling some names out up in here. I can't see that. The light doodle is in here. I see doodle. And then Kendall is in here. Best Nana. I see y'all in here. Where are y'all watching me from and how did you find me? That's my question. Can somebody answer? Because I see y'all in here, but ain't nobody answered the question. Shout out to 757. Doodle keeps joining and then unjoining and then coming back. All right, next question. Why did he say he wanted me to then he says he's not ready for a relationship days later oh my god so who says they want to be with somebody and then a few days later say nah psych i mean come on guys i mean maybe it was you know what in his defense maybe he <laughs> bit off a little bit more than he could chew because sometimes and we have the right to change our mind so if you're in a dating scenario here and you're with a dude and then he decided new gifts and he decided that he didn't happy holidays okay i got somebody to say something to me queen sparkle hey girl happy holidays oh you're in florida what part of florida it's funny you say you're in florida side note guys i was going to move to florida that was literally my plan in the next you're in tampa i've been to tampa i was in tampa it's been a long time but i was in tampa in 2014 i wasn't I was in Tampa in 2014. Tampa is really nice. I've been to Pensacola, Tampa, Clearwater. I went to Miami. I really want to move to Miami, but I'm not because of the gators and the hurricanes. But I was listening in Miami in August, and I'm going to Miami again for my birthday in June. So shout out to Florida. So, <laughs> all right. So what was I saying? I got sidetracked, but I appreciate the sidetrack. It's finally somebody talking back. because It's up here. It's telling me, guys. I can see up here you see where my finger is i see who on here and y'all not talking back but tampa is talking back so i appreciate it she's showing love so over here i see other people do this too when i be watching other videos to be like here so up here guys is where you want to like the video give me some hearts give me i saw you scrolling oh okay well guys give me some love here if you're watching go ahead there we go give me some hearts right there i see other people saying that but they be like major influencers and i was just like i don't even be telling y'all to like nothing or where i just need to i guess i'm learning tiktok and how to engage more okay well i'm glad you saw me queen sparkle i love that thank you guys for for liking it yay i got a whole bunch of hearts now okay so what was the question oh yeah so can you imagine dating a guy and then a few days later, he's like, nah, I meant to say, I don't want to be with you. Can you like, what do you do with that? I think, like I was saying, people have the right to change their mind. Sometimes when dudes get into stuff, it be, they be in too deep and they just don't know what they are doing or it's much more than they expected. That's okay. Because I respect a dude who's being honest enough to say, you know, I'm good. This isn't going to work. And don't nobody have to give you a reason as to why they don't want to date you. So we got to keep that in mind too. So if you're in a situation like that and then all of a sudden things go left and he decides he doesn't want to date you anymore, just be happy that he actually told you because that's commendable, that's respectful, or he could have ghosted you. Which one would you want to be ghosted or for him to say, you know what, this isn't going to work. So what do you do? You don't do anything. You respect what he wants to do. Just like when someone wants to break up with you or break things off, you respect their decision. Even though it may not feel good, it's not going to be fun for somebody to want to date you then all of a sudden turn around a few days and say no or a few months or even a year 
However, you have to respect it. Don't try to force anything. Respect them and keep it moving. Now, if you try to spin the block and circle back, y'all know I just talked about that the other day. That's a whole nother, that's a whole nother conversation. Now, maybe he might have been going through some things because things happen, trauma, life events, things of that nature. However, if it's nothing like that, then what is we doing, sir? What was different before that you ain't got going on right now? Or did you want to just holler at another female? It could literally be anything. I'm just throwing things out there. You just want to be wise and emotional, intelligent when it comes to these dudes signing up for you. And then they signing off a few days because that's not making any sense. So if you're in this situation, you want to definitely inquire about how is it that we're dating one day and we get together and then a few days later now you out just let me know you want to be enlightened because who knows you want to also get a man's opinion anyway one that you like and care about and that you respect because maybe it's something about you that could be off-putting you never know that doesn't mean you're a bad catch it just means you could do a little tweak that means, as we all can, that just means that you're maybe not aware of the energy you're putting out, which is possible. You just want to be open when it comes to dating and why things don't work out. And it's a-okay to ask them, hey, what happened? How do we go from point A to point Z, but all that stuff in the middle just ain't adding up? Enlighten me. Be honest. And if you want to do to be honest, you have to be smart and intelligent enough to receive the constructive criticism and then make the necessary adjustments if you respect that person. I keep saying respect because if you don't, then you're not going to listen. But you shouldn't be dating someone you don't respect anyway. But people do it every day, right? Just saying. All right, we're going to move on to the next question. How long have I been on here? I don't even know. But I'm going to answer just maybe three more. All right. Why has the guy friend of mine been pushing me away, but he also wants me? Is this romantic? Like some people be writing me questions on here and it's just like, I'll be having so many questions because I'm a detail oriented person. It's just like, what do you mean? So they're like, why has a guy friend of mine been pushing me away, but also wants me? Sounds like he's in a conflict with himself. Sounds like he might like you, but then again, he don't want to like you too much because if he like you too much, he's insecure. And then he feels like you're going to push him away and ultimately, ultimately not like him back. This is too much back and forth. This is too many games. An adult shouldn't be doing these things. I don't know how old this person is, but if it were me and I had a guy friend that was pushing me away, but also wants me, no, look, I'm going to stay away because one thing I'm not going to do is try to force myself or force my likeness on anyone. And you shouldn't either, sis. Let me tell y'all something. I went from literally being desperate and thirsty and like going out of my way to double text and profess my likeness for dudes for them to literally look at me like I was stupid and leave me on red and ghost the F out of me time and time again. And so I went from doing too much to like setting my boundaries and being aware of what I'm doing and just assessing what I'm doing and making sure I'm not doing the absolute most. Thank you guys for your hearts. Thank you. And and I went from that. And so now, and, and I ain't, hey, I ain't perfect. So if I'm dating someone and I feel myself, if I feel a little hint of some thirstiness, <laughs> just a smidget <laughs> of some thirstiness creeping in because it can happen. Why? Because I am human. I will stop myself in my tracks and get myself together. I was dating a guy earlier than <laughs> earlier this year. Oh my God, he gave me so much content. I have never gotten so much content out of a grown man ever, but he gave me a lot of content. And as I was dating him in the very beginning, I felt myself like not knowing what to do, not knowing what to talk about, being robotic. And guess what I did? I recognized that in myself. And I'm like, girl, what are you doing? And I sat with myself and I had a conversation like, what are you doing? What is your problem? This dude is just a dude. You're just a girl. Get your ish together. And guess what? I got it together. Ultimately, it didn't work out for me. And for me, he wanted to continue to date. It just wasn't a match. And that's okay. And I thought it would be okay for him, but he got mad. And that's okay. I've been mad before when somebody didn't want me. It happens. It's not the end of the world. I'm sure he's moved on and got back with his baby mama. No big deal, right? Uh-uh, no sweat off my back. So when you're dating someone, <laughs> you don't, I'm, that was petty. Uh, that's petty. That's petty for me to say that. But it's serious. It's for real. I'm, he probably is back with his baby mama, as he should be if that's where he wants to be. You just got to let people be where they want to be. You can't let people come up in your life, be messing around, and then bouncing out. And you can't be going up in people's life and dating someone and be doing the most 
Cool your jets, sis. Calm the F down. Relax. Realize who you are. You're a respectful, beautiful, wonderful, kind, worthy young lady. There's no need for you to get out of character to get this dude's attention. There's no reason for you to go outside of yourself to try to attract him in. But just you being there in the room should be more than enough, along with your personality, of course. So quit doing the most. It's not necessary. Dudes don't want that anyway. They're going to run in the other direction. So just do you. Recognize what you're doing. Recognize the energy you're giving off. Have standards, morals, boundaries, values, and just take it from there. Either he going to like you or he not. That's it. It keeps telling me to invite. Oh, thank you, Queen. It keeps telling me, why on some people does it say invite? Like, what does that even mean? Like, a lot of people on here, they just come on here. Thank you guys for the hearts. Keep them coming. A lot of people on here, they will, like, they'll come. It'll say such and such joined. And then on some people, like it says, Teresa Joan, it's telling me, to invite like it's giving me an option to invite like what's that about yeah girl you get a shoot i don't know nothing about tiktok but i do not i do know a lot about dating and communicating but i don't know what that means like it's it's like with you queen it's not giving me the option to invite you but it's telling me specifically to invite other people so are they wanting to be in the video like i don't even know that means she can join your live to talk <clears throat> but why does it not say it on you why doesn't it give me that option on you it's not saying that for you it's only saying it on a certain on a few people. I don't know. I need to study TikTok. That's one of the things I want to do because my TikTok has been growing expeditiously. You only have 800, 800, 800 what? Followers? My TikTok has been growing expeditiously, expeditiously thanks to you guys. That's TI wording it. Thanks to you guys watching and sharing and because I've had to when you're on TikTok, well for me, I didn't know anything about TikTok. I didn't know what I was doing. And I've had to pivot because when I first got on here, I I think when I got on here, I had a little same instrumental in the background. It was like a white floral background and I would just talk, but I wasn't talking to an individual. It was like I was talking to a group of people, but not really to an audience. I was just talking. And so I changed it from that. And then I would do the little slides that you see. I still have my slides, like five reasons why he's not a good guy. And it'll have some music on it and it'll do the slides. I was doing that. <clears throat> yes, learn it. It's also make sure you watch your violations. My violations? I ain't violated nobody now. No, <laughs> no I haven't gotten any, I haven't got any violations, but the slides, are you talking about those slides? So I did the slides. The slides really hit off for a long time. I, I was doing those slides and them slides was getting tens of thousands of views. I really like the slides and I see that you guys like the slides. I think one slide is pent. I think the reasons why he gives you the silent treatment. The silent treatment is a big one for you ladies that watch my videos. Y'all always want to know why this dude is giving you the silent treatment. Me, me personally, look. I'm not going to beat you over the head with a bat to try to get you to talk to me. You want to be mute? Leave your mouth on mute. I'm going to go over here about my business, about my day, living my life. We got to learn, ladies. Like, anytime I talk about what I deem the mute mouth man, meaning the guy that is deliberately not talking to you on purpose, shh, look, don't, don't, look, don't come over here with me with that because... I will act like you don't exist. That's just my energy. I ain't telling you to be like B. Wiley when it comes to that. I'm just telling you, ain't nobody got time for that. And I'm not creating the time or energy to boggle my brain about why your mouth is mute on purpose. Dude, boop, what did Nene Licks do? <laughs> Who did she do that to? She did that to somebody. Was it Kenya? <laughs> when she did that. <laughs> right, I did that. Then a person I was dating asked, why does he always, okay, it cut it off, gave, uh oh, it cut your comment off. Oh, why does he always have to start the conversation? Well, when a dude is like, talk, all right, so and this is what I believe. If a dude, it's he who finds a wife. So when a dude is dating, he's going to pursue. I ain't into pursuing dudes and I'm not going to pursue no dude. I'm not going to shoot my shot. I don't recommend or suggest women shoot their shot. I'm old school and it is what it is. Y'all can justify shooting shots. Y'all can justify pursuing men, whatever. I don't put that out there. That's not my jam. So anyway, so if he's pursuing you, then he should be initiating conversations because he's the one 
who went outside of his self and stepped into your life to talk to you. Now, of course, your job is to reciprocate, but it's not your job to sit up and initiate everything and keep the conversation going. That don't even make sense. So if he don't have enough gall or strength or energy or time to initiate conversation, then do. I mean, I don't know. What do you think this is? And let's not even talk about that because old girl, husband, I don't even know his name, but y'all know who I'm about to talk about. He was talking about he the prize and how she basically shot her shot at him. Simone shot her shot at him on the app and he believes the dude is a prize and she drove 45 minutes and it's just like, I don't even know who this dude is. I still don't even know his name. I don't know his name. And I'm just like, what is happening? What is happening? And I, I, I'm just kind of confused about, and you know what? I used to say that the woman in the pro, is the prize. And I still, I, I do believe that because it's he who finds a wife. And then once you get together, you're equal. You're equal partners. Busy. What is busy? What are you saying busy? What does that mean? I did a video about a dude about dudes being busy I, that video went up this morning and this video is going to go on youtube today on christmas eve as well as tiktok of course but uh, are you talking about guys saying that they're busy is he saying is that why he said he didn't initiate conversation because he was busy you see how i just jumped to conclusions and i just try to figure stuff out but seriously ladies don't let that busy word get to y'all if you're hearing a dude tell y'all he busy then he's on some bs and that's flat out period point blank and and, and i'm not moving off of that it's the end to my comment. Oh, okay. Hold on. Start the conversation. He always to start the conversation busy. Okay. Well, thank you for engaging because there's other people in here that I'm looking right at and they ain't saying nothing. They some um, some ghost face. I got a ghost face in here. They don't meaning they don't have a picture. That's all I mean by that. But I appreciate you guys for watching. All right, I'm gonna do one more question. Oh, here this is a good one too. Can can y'all keep them hearts coming? I'm at like 400. Oh, I'm going to do what the other, the big influencers do. They be like, y'all go, and they do it in a voice shop. Y'all do it in a If you give me a like, Coach B. Wally. They do, I was watching this random, <laughs> this random uh, live. And this dude, he was like talking to, the, well, I think, anyway. Anyway, so he was talking to the camera like I'm talking to you. And then he, then when he wanted y'all to heart, when he wanted his audience to heart, he was like, his tone totally changed. Like, da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-
is a habitual liar, has a previous pattern of lying, thinks that lying is no big deal, doesn't care if he has little white lies, that is a problem. So unless you can deal with the liar, don't even do it. Me personally, I dated a liar for five years. He would tell small lies that didn't even make sense. And I'm just like, dude, you got to stop lying. And the last time he lied to me was way beyond after we had broke up. I had already moved here, been here for years. And I met up with him right before Thanksgiving. It was 2019. It was Thanksgiving 2019 because we'd been cordial. We didn't have a bad breakup. I just left the whole state. And that's how we ultimately ended up breaking up. <laughs> I reached a thousand. Oh my gosh. Thank you guys. Thank you. for. Is this one person that she's liking everything or is it because it's five people in here right now or is it five people collectively? Y'all done got me at 1.1. It's cracking. Thank you so much. So I guess that does work. Y'all don't like to ask for nothing. <laughs> and so closed mouths clearly don't get fed. I'm going to start asking for likes next time. I'm going to start recommending y'all like because I appreciate it. Now I'm over a thousand. I appreciate that. But yeah, so I was with old boy for, for five years and he would tell these lies and I would know when he would be lying, it would just be so annoying. And I would call him out on these lies. And then fast forward when we have way, we, we don't owe each other nothing. We ain't together. We ain't going to be together. We were just meeting up at the club with the other, and not just me and him. It was other people there too. Just like a group of people. We had a good time. And the next day he was still lying. He was telling an unnecessary lie. Now, one thing I can't stand is a liar but an unnecessary lie. Like, don't be volunteering lies up in here. That's just stupid. It just doesn't even make sense. Thanks, queen. It just does not even make sense. So if you're in a situation to where a dude is lying, you got to call him out on it. You really have to call him out. And then you have to pay attention to his actions to see if he's going to lie some more. And then if you find out he lying some more, this is who he is, perhaps. And then you have to then decide, do I want to be with a liar? Do I want to be with a dude that I'm going to literally question everything that comes flying out of his flapping lips? Because I think that it could be a lie due to previous lies that he has told me. So if you're living in a lie with this dude, I need for you to get out of it. Because it's a fairy tale and it don't make sense. You got it? All right. I think that's about it. How long was I in here? I don't even know, but my mouth is getting a little dry. I got a long night ahead of me, guys. What are you guys eating for Christmas? I'm going to do... I'm going to... Let me tell y'all what I'm going to do. I'm going to do cabbage, which I've done cabbage before. I love cabbage. Cabbage, hot water bread. So good. And then I'm going to do fried chicken. And then I'm mastering my fried chicken. <laughs> I'm going to do fried chicken. And then I'm going to do mashed potatoes. I've never made mashed potatoes a day of my life. I'm not a chef at all. I never said I was a chef and you're judging me because I've never made mashed potatoes. So I'm going to make mashed potatoes. I have some black eyed peas in there. You're supposed to eat black eyed peas for New Year's. I'm going to do that too. But I'm going to have some in there because they just need to be cooked. And then macaroni, my mother's macaroni. I'm going to try it. I, my mother makes the best macaroni I've ever had. She's in Arkansas and in St. Louis. I can only get it once a year and that's on Thanksgiving. But I'm going to try it this year. Y'all wish me luck. And then I'm going to bake a cake. I'm going to bake. <laughs> I'm laughing because I've never baked a cake. I've never baked anything. I'm going to bake a cake. That's a lot. I tried to bake a pecan pie a decade ago. Disaster. So I'm going to try my hand at baking a cake. A white cake, white icing, and then right frosting, actually. Did y'all know there's a difference between frosting and icing? It is. I looked it up. Google it. I got frosting. So anyway, and then I'm going to do one thing that I always do religiously for the last probably almost decade now. It's just a Reese's peanut butter cup. I don't know what it's really called. I got the recipe from the owner at my previous job. It's called a Reese's peanut butter cup truffle. I don't know, but what it is. It involves Reese's peanut butter cups, my favorite candy of all time, Reese's peanut butter cups, whipped cream, and then brownies are in the mix, and the peanut butter, Reese's peanut butter chips. When I tell y'all it's rich and it is the best, see now it's saying I can invite Lady CK. When I tell y'all it is the best dessert I've ever had and it's so rich, so I can't eat a lot of it, plus I'm lactose, so it is a disaster in my stomach, but it is so good so i'm gonna do that y'all wish me luck on my cake y'all wish me luck on my mashed potatoes and y'all wish me luck on my fried chicken because i'm having an issue i need to get an old school skillet because when i do my fried chicken it's crispy but it's not bite into it and it's popeyes crispy so y'all wish me luck on that i hope you enjoyed this video thank you so much for getting me beyond 
1,000 hearts. Y'all still hearting right now. I appreciate that. And if you want more Be Wiley, go to my YouTube. That link is in my bio. Outside of that, if you want to book me to be your life coach, feel free to do so. Coach Be Wiley is my name. Mymentor.life is where you look me up. That link is in my bio. We can book a one-on-one. -on -one where We can talk about your dating dilemma, your dating disaster, your previous dating trauma, why you don't know how to use your voice when you're dating, why you can't call this dude out on his bluff, why you acting desperate when you know you're not? Why you feeling like you lonely and you ain't never going to get no man? Like, the list runs on. And I have coached women from as young as teenage girls in high school up to 60s. So, hey, the spectrum is very big and it's waiting on you if you need help. And then the women who watch me, it's very funny. You know how you'll have your age bracket of women who watch you. But every age bracket... From, I think from the early to mid 20s up to 60s, they're like neck and neck on YouTube as far as who watches me. So that's a blessing. So I'm I'm crossing all the borders and I'm just trying to, to reach women and I'm just trying to help you all find your voice, use your, use your voice effectively, know your worth, have standards, have morals, call these dudes out. When you see BS, call it out. When you see it's not worth it, get out and keep it moving and get on to the next one that is worth your time. It is Christmas. Tis the season. I don't know that I'm doing a video tomorrow because I'm totally tomorrow. I'm not doing no work. I'm going to fry the chicken tomorrow, but tomorrow I'm going to literally be on the couch. That's right over there. I'm going to have me some mimosas. I'm going to watch my TV. That's right here. Right now I'm watching this Christmas. It's so good. This Christmas. That's what I'm watching right now. I watched almost Christmas last night. And I'm just going to be watching Charlie Brown and stuff like that. Tis the season, y'all. I hope you guys have a great Christmas. I hope you're not lonely on this Christmas. If you are, tune into my videos. There's over 700 on YouTube. And there's many of them here on TikTok. Outside of that, that's it. I'm going to close my laptop. Because I'm done working this part of work. Now I'm going to get in the kitchen and do that kind of work. So Merry Christmas. Thank you so much for all the likes, the love, and the comments. And I'll talk to you ladies later. Bye.